Welcome back to the Cabbage Patch. I'm Dad. I'm Tom. And I'm Gus. And what did we do today? We, we played, played a Seven, seven, seven Wonders. It's a little hard to see down there. Yeah, seven Wonders. The box top's over there, so I can't bring it out. Seven Wonders is a card game for, um, is it two players? Two to seven, I believe. Um, a huge, uh, huge player count. We actually played this three to seven, not two to seven. Uh, we actually played this the other night at game night uh, with our friends, and there were seven of us. So the minimum player count is three, and the maximum is seven. Which is perfect. Which is perfect, uh, because we love three-player games because there's three of us. It is a uh, it's a city-building game, so it's got some things in common with things like Machikoro, right? Because you're building the city, and the city generates you victory points. And it takes place over three ages. And I don't know if you can see these cards here. They've got num Roman numerals 1, 2, and 3. Each player gets these... Uh, where did the other player boards go? Uh, gets these wonder boards. So, for instance, I have Giza, the Pyramids of Giza. Gus has Olympia. Olympia! And Tommy has upside down Rodos, um, and each, so each player has sort of a different set of potential objectives that they can fulfill throughout the game. You deal a hand of seven cards from the age deck, and the size of the deck changes depending on how many players you have. So everybody gets seven cards, and in a three-player game, that means there are twenty-one cards in the deck. And you set these decks up ahead of time with the cards for those that player count in them. Uh, and the third age has some special rules for setting up that player deck because there are some special purple cards that need to get uh, folded into it to, to make it all work. Um, and the way the game works is you get that hand of seven cards and then you pick one card that you want to play, that you can afford to play. And on the cards there are resources that they cost and if you have those resources on your player board or in the cards that you've played, then you can afford that. If you don't have the resources, then you have to buy them from one of your neighbors. And in a three-player game, we can buy from each other. In a larger game, you're restricted to just buying from the people that are next to you. Uh, so you play one card, and you put it face down. And then you take the rest of your hand, and you hand it to the next player. And one of the things that you need to pay attention to is on the bottom of the age cards is the direction that you pass your cards to, which we screwed up in this, but there were only three of us, so it didn't really have that big of an impact. So in the first age, we hand our cards this way. In the second age, it reverses, and you hand your cards that way. And in the third age, it goes back the other way. So in the first age, you get your seven cards, and as you might expect in the first age, those cards cost less to play when there's costs, right? And you're trying to build your civilization, your 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 city, your your uh, city state, your your one empire. And you're also allowed to, as you play cards, instead of playing a card with a cost on it, you can play a card face down. So this one costs two wood to build your wonder. And your wonder does more stuff for you as you go through the game, right? So my wonder just basically gives me lots of victory points as I build it. Gus's wonder gives him victory points, and, and he gets to spend less on certain cards. Tommy's wonder, if you can see over there, gets him extra military. Murder. Extra military, right? So you play until each player only has two cards left in their hand. So you're, handing, you're playing a card, you're spending the resources. The resources are constantly renewing, so you're not... You're not getting rid of the resources. You have them for every turn until you build up your first age. And when you only have two cards left in your hand, if you once we pass that deck over, or I'm sorry, that hand over to each other, and there's only two of them left, we pick one and we discard the other. Right? And that ends the age. And at the end of the age, you do what they call military conquest. Right. And if you have... Military symbol cards, you compare them to the others. To the other guys. And if you have a higher number, you will most likely win. And if you have a higher number, you get more points that end up counting as victory points 
at the end of the game. So in the first age, you get one victory point for each battle that you win. In the second age, you get three. And in the third age, you get five. So military conquest comes into play as each sort of turn ends. And, and that's it. It's, um, there are plenty of uh, videos online to show you how to play it. And you can watch our playthrough to see how it unfolds. But at the end of the game, you add up all your victory points from all of your civilization. And whoever has the most victory points wins. So, for instance, I've got a lot of these blue cards that gave me extra victory points. So does Gus. So does Tommy. I have a castle. Um, but that's not the end-all be-all because there's victory points for uh, the blue cards. There are sometimes victory points for the yellow cards. So I've got a card here that says for every brown card that I played, which are these resource cards over here, I get one victory point. I add up the victory points that I get from battle, and we add up the victory points that we have for money that we have in our bank. And that's it. It's a, it's a really cool game. It played really well at, uh, at seven people. We had a full seven-player game a couple days ago, and I don't think that took more than 45 minutes to play. I think it was pretty fast. Short, this sweet, three-player game took us about 20, maybe 25 minutes. It played really fast. It, it took about half the time it took to play a set. Player. It took about half the time it took to play a set, which I guess makes sense because there's only three of us. So I really like this game. Things to remember to do, you got to remember um, to pay the resource costs here. And if you don't have those resources, then you can't play that card. So if you don't have them or you can't buy them from a neighbor, you can't play that card and you have to pick a different card to play. You can get money by, instead of playing a card, turning a card face down and discarding it, and then you get three coins. Um, and uh, there are some other cards that give you money throughout the game. But it really makes you decide what you want to be, and sometimes it's not what you planned on being. So I didn't plan on being the military conquest guy, but I had the most armies in play. So I ended up winning 58 points to 47 points for Tommy, to 29 points for Gus. Uh, cool game. I think those are the two, the two rules. Make sure you're passing in the right direction and make sure you're paying attention to the resource costs. Oh, and also, you, uh, I believe there's a rule that says you can't have two of the same card in play. And I messed that up. And we missed that while Gus was playing, so he's got two presses there, which gave him an extra papyrus, which at the end of the day didn't really have much of an impact on, your, on, on whether or not you won or lost. Um, yeah, the game will force you to do stuff that maybe you don't want to do. So I ended up getting a lot of a lot of red cards early. So I ended up building the big army. And then once I had a big army, I had to keep it in, cause, in case you guys tried to get the army back. So, cool what game. Uh, anything else to add? Uh, not really. You said it was cool, fast, and fun. Yes. So Gus didn't like it at seven players as much, right? So... I'll, I'll tell you the situation. If it's three players, it's three characters. If it's two, <laughs> if it's seven players, it's a two or one. Right. So it's it's longer. It's a little more complicated. There's much more stuff to keep track of when there are seven players. So that's a good that's a good litmus test. And so and if you are playing with seven or more people, you can only play with up to seven. But yeah, if you are playing with seven people. Do not do it on the B mode. Do not do it on the B mode, yeah. Because so uh, that's the other thing. That is, that's a good point. There is two sides to these boards that change up the uh, the way the game works. Um, and the B side, the dark, the, the night side, there's a, there's a an A and a B and an older version of the game. In this version of the game, it's day and night. If you play with the night side, your objectives for your building, your, oh, that we didn't actually even talk about building the wonders. Your objectives for building the wonders are more complicated. Building the wonders is a good way, I think, well, we did talk a little bit about it, a good way to get extra victory points. But different wonders have different conditions, and if you turn the card over, they've got, uh, come, oh, I can do that right now. There's four stages to this night wonder, which is pretty cool. But how do you get to the... You just have to have to build it. There are four stages but to the wonder. That doesn't even look like nighttime. Well, it's nighttime in Giza. It does look like nighttime. It's can dusk. I, can I see? Because I can't see the computer screen. No. It's dusk. So, the B side, the night side, 
is a little more complicated and requires more resources to get all the stuff. But that's pretty cool. And. All right, so I think we're ready to give it a score. What? Um, I like how it, it depends what what board it takes. There's different people doing different things. That's good. The artwork is actually really cool too. So I guess I would say that part of the part of the charm of the game is the artwork. Because all the artwork on the cards and on the player boards is really cool. Because last time I played, there was only one person walking down the path, and now there's like one, two, three, four, five. Oh, people. did you accidentally have the B side? You must have accidentally had the nice side. Let me, let me check that. Let's see. Oh, no. No, okay. maybe you had a different wonder last time. No, I had Olympia. Okay. It, it was just a different scenario. Okay. Um, so that's cool. So I think this game's got a pretty, pretty decent amount of replay value. It's really easy to teach other people. We had it on our first game night with, uh, with new players, uh, and we picked it up pretty fast. So I think that's it. Anything else? Thomas, anything to add? No. no. Ready to give it a score? Yeah. All right. So I'm, how many score? What are you going to give it? Cabbages. You're going to give it three, no matter how many people. All right? How about you? Three, three two, or one if it's seven. <laughs> so three for a three-player game. Two or one. And we'll give it a two or one. So we're probably going to average that out and give you, you're going to give it a two. No. Well, we'll figure that out when we post the video. Ah, ooh, do I, do I like it a three? I think I do. I think I like it a three. I think I'm going to give it a three. Three. It gets nine. It gets nine seven. for a three-player game. And seven for a seven. And seven for a bigger than three players. A seven for a seven player game. Okay. <laughs> that's good. All right. Well, I Let's think that's it. Outro. That's our review. Let's do the outro. Let's do the outro. Subscribe, like, hit that bell. Tommy. Leave a comment if you wish. Planning cabbages, not us though. Because us, this is a vineyard, not a cabbage yard. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All and, right. And. You are, you are not at the right university. Oh, well, you know, that's, you're just making stuff up now. Yeah. All right. Thank <laughs> no, you, no, guys. A, we'll see you next time. Here. Yes, I see it's a university. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.